Welcome back everyone to On.net. I'm your host, James Montemagno. And today I have one of my best friends in the entire world back, Adrian, over here talking about some IoT. How's it going, buddy? It's going great. Thank you so much, James, for having me. Now, if we have a bunch of IoT devices on the desk up here, you know we're talking about IoT and specifically with the good friends over at Wilderness Labs, specifically the Meadow platform. And Adrian, we've had a bunch of different examples of Meadow here and there. And as a mobile developer, there's one thing that I always have to do, which is save data. Absolutely. And um, I hear that you're going to talk to us a little bit about how we would save data to a device like this. Absolutely. We'd love to. And so we'll, we'll set the stage. So, of course, we think IoT, we think about internet. And we often think about sending data to the cloud. Yeah. I know um, IoT Hub is a great place to be sending your data. But these devices are often out in the field, and we don't always have a reliable connection. Or yeah. we might want to collect some data, you know, um, summarize it, and then send it to the cloud either in a batch or as a, you know, as a average value. And so having the ability to store structured data on your device is actually really important for gotcha. IoT. Yeah. And so we think about storing data. We do think about structured data. And we're C-Charp developers. We like to use things that we're, we're used to. And you know, often, you know, I come from a mobile background. You come from a mobile background. Mm -hmm. And what's our favorite database on mobile? Uh, I like to use this little thing called SQLite. SQLite. Personally, yes. every, and every one of my <laughs> applications pretty much ever. Yeah. Absolutely. So SQLite is pretty fantastic because it's yeah. native on Android, it's native on iOS. You know, we can use it on Windows platforms as well, of course. And so yeah. we love SQLite, and we of course we love SQLite.net. We love yeah. that ORM that makes it really easy for us as .NET developers mm -hmm. to uh, to read and write to our database. Turns out we have SQLite support on this and SQLite.net wow. support Whoa. on the Meadow. Wow, very cool. And so. I'm imagining it's completely different. I have to relearn a whole new ORM and everything like that. Or Believe it or not, uh, it's almost the exact same process. Oh, I love wow. SQLite because, of course, it's really a single file on the device, in the file system, so no server, yeah. uh, and really no configuration. We get the same experience on Meadow as well, and I'd love to show you how that works in yeah. the code. Let's take a look at the code. Fantastic. So I have some code here. This is our, our tank level monitor. So this is uh, we've got a little demo here on the state, on the desk. Our uh, prototype to measure the water depth. And so in this is a case here, we might want to store the water level over time into our database. So what's the first thing we do as a .NET developer when I add in some new functionality? Um, install a NuGet package. Maybe? I love I it. Know. Thank you. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, I think it's a trick question. Do I create trick an question, interface? Do I create a thing? But yeah, maybe a NuGet package if there's one out there. I don't want to write it. Someone else wrote it. Yeah, I'm throwing James on the spot there, but uh, thank you. Uh, and that's exactly what we do here for Meadow. We're actually oh, cool. going to install this SQLite net static package, oh, cool. bring it into our Meadow application, just like we would for other .NET platforms. Uh, this one is built specifically to support Meadow. And this gives us SQLite.NET support. So let me show you the database, and I'll show you how this is set up. Uh, and for those of you that have done this before, this is going to look really familiar. Again, what's beautiful is we're running this on a microcontroller. Yeah, wow. Uh, ultra low power, a low memory footprint, and we can still run full SQLite.NET. <clears throat> and so right away, the first thing we do is we create our SQL light connection. So we see that here on line 18. And then we when we initialize the database. So in this case here, remember we use a single file for our mm -hmm. database. And so we see this exactly here. So we're going to create our path. In this case here, we're calling it tank level readings db. Again, we just chose that. And we're going to create our SQL light connection with our database path. This is going to create our SQL light file on our Meadow file system. Cool. And then, really, we're just using the SQLite.NET APIs. Awesome. Uh, here, for a little bit of convenience, for setting up the code, for the drop of the table and creating it. So I've got a fresh database. Obviously, in production, we can get rid of this drop table. And then we can do all of our, our CRUD operations. So we can do our save reading. And so in this case here, we're going to pass in a tank level reading uh, model object. Let's take a look at that. And again, this is probably really familiar. No, notice, using SQLite, we're going to annotate our class. You can see things like our primary key, uh, and then all the things we care about. And so for our tank level here, we obviously care very much about uh, the tank level and the temperature. In the case, we're doing some, um, some atmosphere data here as well. So we've got our pressure and our humidity. And we're able to just instantiate this object, hmm. send it to our database, and write it. And so if we take a look here at save reading, again, notice it's just an insert call. Just a little insert. That's it. Just, no. just that's it. Uh, you want to get specific reading by ID? We can do that. You want to get all your readings? Again, I love this ORM. And all we do in this case here is whenever we get a new sample reading, and if you've seen our tank level demo, we're updating the display. In this case, we're just updating the database and writing that value every time we update the, the data value. But 
But of course, it's C sharp. And so we can choose when to read and write the database based on our needs and our business logic. That's very cool. And really, that's about all there is that's to it. it. That's amazing. That's it. I love nice, short, quick to the point because if you know SQLite dash net and you know SQLite, now it works on this amazing embedded device. Very cool, Adrian. I love demos where I'm like, I've written all that code <laughs> about billion times over the last 15 years. Absolutely. That's awesome. Well, thank you for showing this off. And we'll put a link to all of the source code down below and all of the other videos that we've done about Meadow right here on the Donut YouTube. Adrian, thank you for showing this all off. I appreciate it. Thank you, James. Awesome. And thanks for tuning in. Of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and jam that notification button wherever you're at on the internet. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.